professor, Faculty of Engineering and Technology, Assam Downtown University, is going to give a lecture on bearings. Okay, so what is a bearing? A bearing is a machine element whose function is to support a moving element and to guide or confine its motion. So there are various classifications of bearing. Number one is depending upon the direction of load to be supported. Number A is radial bearing. Number B is truss bearing. Okay, now come to the radial bearing. Okay, so it is also known as journal bearing. Load is perpendicular to axis of rotation of moving element. And truss bearing, load X along the direction of rotation. So here you can see the a sketch of radial bearing and also a sketch of truss bearing. Okay. So number two, depending on nature of contact between walking surfaces, it can be classified as number a sliding contact bearing or plane bearing or journal bearing, and number b is rolling contact bearing, which is uh, we can take examples of rolling contact bearing as steel balls are placed between walking surfaces. Okay, so here you can see uh, sliding contact bearing and rolling contact bearing, the two sketches. Okay, so let's see some example of sliding contact bearing like uh, centrifugal pump, steam and gas turbine, cross head of steam turbine, crankshaft bearing in petrol and diesel engine and let's see some examples of rolling contact bearing as automobile rear and front axle gearbox small size electric motor next we move on to types of plane bearing here you can see the three sketches one of which this is a full sliding contact bearing where angle of contact of bearing even journal is 360 degree this one okay next this you can see is fitted sliding contact bearing here no clearance and diameter of journal and bearing is equal okay and this sketch is of partial sliding contact bearing here the angle of contact is 120 degree next number three Depending upon type of loading, it, the bearing can be classified as number A, bearing with steady load and number B, bearing with variable load. Now, uh, the bearing with steady load, it is also called power bearing. Example, electric generator, motor, centrifugal pump, blower, fan. And bearing with variable load is main crank pin, wrist pin, Camsat bearing in diesel engine. Okay. Now, next we move on to basic modes of lubrication in bearing. Number one, liquid lubricants. Example, mineral oil, vegetable oil. Number two is semi-solid lubricant. Example, grease. And number three, solid lubricant. Example, graphite, molybdenum disulfide, etc. Okay. So, now comes the objectives of lubrication number one to reduce friction number two to prevent wear number three to carry away heat generated due to friction and number four to protect journal bearing from corrosion next we move on to properties of bearing materials number one is high compressive strength number two fatigue strength should be high number three corrosion resistant Number four, high thermal conductivity. Number five, low coefficient of thermal expansion. Number six, bondability. Many high capacity bearings are made by bonding one or more thick layers of bearing materials to a high strength steel shell. Okay. Okay, now let's see some hydrodynamic lubricated bearing. Okay, here you can see a sketch where this journal is at rest okay this journal starts rotating and this journal is this sketch is of a journal at 
full speed okay now hydrodynamic lubrication is defined as the system of lubrication in which the load supporting the fluid is created by the shape and relative motion of the sliding surfaces initially the shaft is at rest okay and it shrinks to the bottom of the clearance space under load w as the load channel starts rotating it will climb the bearing surface and if the speed is further increased it will force the fluid into the wedge shaped region okay when the shaft rotates in bearing pressure is created within it okay which support the external load w since the pressure is created within the system due to the rotation of the shaft this type of bearing is called self-acting bearing okay in this case it is not necessary to supply the lubricant under pressure and only requirement is sufficient and continuous supply of lubricant and let's take an example as centrifugal pump okay next we move on to hydrostatic lubricated bearing here you can see a sketch where journal is at rest and this journal is at full speed okay now hydrostatic lubricated bearing it is also called externally pressurized bearing the load can be supported without any relative motion between the journal and bearing this is achieved by forcing externally pressurized lubricant between the journal and bearing initially the shaft rests on bearing surface but as the pump starts high pressure fluid is emitted into the clearance space force the surfaces of bearing and journal to separate out example that we can say gyroscope wall mill etc okay here in this journal it has high load carrying capacity even at low speed okay it has also no starting friction it has no rubbing action at any operation speed but this one is really really expensive okay so let's take an example of a bearing okay so here the question is design a suitable bearing of centrifugal pump from the following data some data are being given and we need to design a centrifugal pump okay means bearing of a centrifugal pump so here the given data are load on journal which is 20 kN diameter of journal is 100 mm speed of journal is 900 rpm type of oil is SAE minus 110 the absolute viscosity at 55 degrees centigrade is 0.017 kg meter per second and ambient temperature is given as 15.5 degrees centigrade okay now calculate the mass flow rate of lubricant required for artificial cooling if temperature difference of inlet and outlet of bearing is not exceeded 10 degrees centigrade okay Take heat dissipation constant K2 equal to 1232 watt per meter square degree centigrade. Specific heat of oil is equal to 1850 joule per kg degree centigrade. Okay. So let's solve this one. Okay. So here we have written the given data W, D, N, Z, T0, TA, K2, and S. These are all given data okay so from the design data handbook from table 15.11 we this is the table of 15.11 we have taken the values from this table from design data handbook so now we need to calculate the length of period okay so l by d is equal to 1 to 2 let L by D equal to 1.6 so from here L will be equal to 1.6 into 100 is equal to 160 millimeter next we need to calculate the 
unit pressure ok so formula will be P equal to W divided by twice RI this formula is given in equation 15.18 in design data handbook ok so from here the W value is given in the equation which is 20 into 10 to the power 3 R is given as 100 by 2 and L is we have found out it's 160 ok so we have got this 1.25 newton per mm square or 1.25 mega newton per meter square ok here calculated value of p lies between the tabulated value of p so we can say the design is safe next after we have confirmed that the design is safe we need to find out the bearing characteristics number so it will be calculated as shown C equal to Zn divided by P. The value of Z is given in the equation as 0 0.017. Capital N is given as 900 and small p equal to 1.25. Which is after calculation we got as 12.24. Now, Zn by P tabulated value is 29.01. Here, Zn by P calculated value is very very greater than 1 by third of Zn by P tabulated value. So from this criteria we can say that the design is safe and our clearance ratio will be C by R equal to 0 0.0013 which is also being taken from table 15.11 from design data handbook. Okay. So now calculation of coefficient of friction so the formula goes like this small f equal to pi square divided by 0.5 into 10 to the power 6 z n by p whole into r by c which is taken from equation 15.11 from design data handbook so pi square divided by 0.5 into 10 to the power 6 z value is 0.017 n value is 900 by 60 and p value is 1.25 and r by c we have taken as 1 by 0 0.0013 so after calculation we receive the value of f as 3.097 into 10 to the power minus 3 next we need to calculate the heat generated in bearing so formula is hg is equal to f w v which is taken from equation 15.36 from design data handbook. Now, V equal to pi d n divided by 1000. So, the value of small d is 100. The value of small n is 900 by 60. So, n divided by 1000. So, after calculation, we receive this value as 4.71 meter per second. So, from here, we find the value of H G that is heat generated it will be equal to the value of F is 3.097 into 10 to the power minus 3 W is 20 into 10 to the power 3 and the value of V we have calculated as 4.71 and we have put here the value of 4.71 and after calculation we have received the value of heat generated as 291.73 joule per second now next we have to calculate the heat dissipated in bearing which is given by the formula hd is equal to k to a tb minus ta which is taken from equation 15.40 from design data handbook which is v equal to c double dash a now let's calculate tb minus ta is equal to tr this equation is taken from design data handbook and is numbered as 15.37 and T naught is equal to T A plus twice T R. This is equation 15.31 in design data handbook. So after calculation, we put the value of T naught as 55, T A as 15.5, and twice T R. So from here, we calculate the value of T R as 19.75 degree centigrade. So the value of T B minus T A will also be 19.75 degree centigrade. So from here, the value of HD will be K2A TB minus TA. 
so the value of k2 is 1 2 3 2 the value of a will be l into d and tv minus ta is calculated as 19.75 so we have put the value of l as 0 0.16 and small d as 0 0.1 and after calculation we have received the value of heat dissipated in bearing as 389.312 joule per second which is our required answer so with this lecture we have come to the end so thank you very much